Hello everyone and thanks for joining us once again. I am John Barkway and this is video post number four in our video blog series. And we'll start getting right into the action. First up this week is the NFL. And why, of course, it's the Super Bowl week. Of course, one of the biggest weeks in all of sports. The big game, the Super Bowl this year, a rematch from Super Bowl 42, the New York Giants and the New England Patriots. It's going to take place inside in Indianapolis. Uh, I think being indoors is going to be conducive to some a little bit higher scoring game than these two teams usually play, but I still don't like it going over the projected over under line of 55 and a half. I think both teams should be able to pass the ball. Uh, I think the Giants pass rush is going to be huge in this game to try to get the Brady uh, we saw what happened with Brady in his last game against Baltimore. Uh, if he gets flustered a little bit, he tends to hurry some throws sometimes because he's not used to having guys on his back. Uh, so if the Giants can get pressure on Brady, I think that's going to be a, a big key for them to try to keep the Patriots off and slow down. Uh, I think Eli Manning, uh, this is really his chance to prove that he's one of the top five quarterbacks in the league if he already hasn't. Uh, you know, He's been the king of comebacks this year, lots of late comebacks in games. Uh, set an NFL record for throwing 15 fourth quarter touchdowns this year. So uh, I think it's going to be important for the Giants to at least stay within distance. I think if they fall behind big, it's going to be trouble for them. Uh, same with New England. I, I think if they fall behind big, it's going to be uh, it's going to be hard for them to come back. And by big, I mean two scores even for either team. Uh, but I think New England would, would do better, would fare better uh, falling behind than the Giants will. Uh, when it comes to the actual uh, score for the game, you have to go to SpadoraOnSports.com or go to TheFalloutZone.com and check out uh, some articles that I'll be writing for each site. Uh, but I think it should be a close game. I think the Patriots uh, have the edge offensively slightly, but I think the Giants have the edge defensively. Special teams, you know, that's often a, an overlooked matter. But as we saw in the championship games, uh, the Ravens missing a field goal. Uh, you know, that's a special teams play. And the 49ers, too. Uh, punt return fumbles. Obviously, those are special team plays. So special teams is a huge part of the game. Uh, I would say the slight edge to the Patriots uh, in, in the field goal kicking and a slight edge to the Giants in the punting game and the return games uh, kind of not existing for each team while the Patriots are a little bit better than the Giants. But I think it's going to be a really close game and... Uh, I think not that high scoring, uh, maybe in the mid to upper 20s, uh, but not not in the 30s, which would uh, make it the over-under line. Uh, but I think it's going to be a close game, and we'll see who comes out on top. Let's take a look at college basketball now as we're uh, right in the middle of conference schedule. Uh, let's take a look at the top 10 right now as, as currently in the AP poll. The number one team in America is the Kentucky Wildcats. Number two, Syracuse. Number three, Ohio State. Number four, Missouri getting falling down a couple spots after losing last week. Uh, North Carolina comes in at five. And then Baylor at six. The seven team is Duke. Kansas eight. Michigan State nine. And the undefeated Murray State Racers come in at ten. Uh, and then if you go a little bit further down, you'll see UNLV at 11, Creighton at 13, uh, San Diego State 17, St. Mary's 18, on and on and on, Gonzaga 24. I think this is going to be an interesting year in college basketball when it comes to the tournament, even the conference tournaments, uh, because it's so balanced. We talked about this a little bit earlier uh, in one of these blogs. I think last week we spoke about it. it it's so balanced uh, conference-wise. There's no dominant conference. The, the Big East is usually... Uh, the big power conference that's going to get eight, nine, even ten teams in. Uh, last year they got eleven. I don't. It's not going to be that way this year. It's going to be very evenly distributed. Some of these, you know, so-called mid-major conferences uh, are going to get three or four teams, and even the West Coast Conference is going to get like uh, BYU, St. Mary's, and Gonzaga. Uh, the Atlantic Ten could get as many as four or five teams in. Um, you know, the WAC or the Mountain West could get multiple teams in. The Mountain West definitely will get multiple teams. Uh, the Atlantic 10, uh, as I said, uh, Conference USA is going to get multiple teams in. So there's a lot of these smaller conferences are, are playing some really quality basketball, as you can see by the, the amount of mid-majors, quote-unquote, uh, in the top 25. And it, it's just, it's so 
evenly distributed that the NCAA tournament is going to be a tough call. It's going to be tough uh, in these conference tournaments to leave some of these mid-major teams out uh, if they if they lose in the finals or even the semifinals at a conference tournament and they're you know it's still top twenty-five ranked. You know if Creighton loses uh, in in their second round or something like that, their conference tournament, you're not going to leave them out. They've been a top fifteen team for most of the season. You're not going to leave them out of the tournament. So that takes a spot away from one of these power teams. So I, I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, how the mid majors do this year. And I hope they get a chance to to play some of the big boys. Don't put a lot of the mid mid majors against each other like they tend to do sometimes. You know, don't don't have Creighton play St. Mary's in the first round or something like that. Let them get a shot at some of the big boys, some of the mid level teams from the the major conferences, and, and prove that the mid majors. Uh, can make a run. Could happen in the last few years. We saw Butler two years ago get that title game, and then again last year, and, and VCU joined them in the Final Four. So, uh, you know, anything can happen in the NCAA tournament. It's going to be interesting. Uh, it's going to be harder to predict this year than ever. Let's talk a little NBA briefly here. Uh, you know, the, the season, believe it or not, is almost a quarter, or rather a third of the season over already. And, uh, it's it's just been a wild season. There's been some up and down teams, uh, you know, teams that score 110 and then come back and score 60, or uh, lots of blown leads, or you know, just some shoddy basketball. Really, there there's really been some uh, not great basketball being played a lot of times this year, uh, and it doesn't really matter young team, old team. You know, the old teams have struggled. They're they're starting to turn out a little bit. Teams like the Celtics, the Mavericks, the Spurs, they're starting to turn out a little bit. The Lakers, uh, but. For the most part, the young teams are, are still controlling things. Oklahoma City, uh, Chicago, even upstart teams like Philadelphia, Indiana. Depth is going to be really important heading into the playoffs. Uh, you know, I've heard lots of people talk about, well, once you get to the playoffs, these veteran teams uh, are going to have an advantage because they've been there before. Well, that's true, but also not true because, first of all, by the time you get to the playoffs, First of all, these teams got to make the playoffs. I mean, if they struggle so much, they don't even get in, or they end up the seven or eight seed. You know, it's going to be hard to go on the road and beat one of the top two seeds. For instance, uh, it's almost impossible to beat Chicago or Oklahoma City uh, in their own building. So that's going to be a tough, tough way to go. Uh, and then the second part is, you know, by the time you get to the playoffs, you've used so much energy and uh, ex expanded yourself to to try to even make the postseason that these older teams might not be able to even be successful in the playoffs once they get there. They might already be. Uh, worn out and use pretty much everything they have. So uh, it's a it's a really unusual NBA season, and um, hopefully you know it'll turn around here as we move along further in the season. I can't believe we're almost at the All Star break already. Uh, the trade deadline's fast approaching, second week of March. Could be some big names on the move. Uh, doesn't look like New Jersey's going to get Dwight Howard, so they might go ahead and trade Darren Williams. Orlando's kind of struggled as of late, so Dwight Howard. Uh, really being been unhappy with his team as of late with his teammates. Uh, so he probably will end up getting moved at some point this year. It, it's going to be interesting. There's, there's a lot of guys uh, that could go a lot of different places. We've heard Amara Stoudemire, uh, you know, might get traded out of New York. Him and Carmelo, that chemistry is not exactly working. So uh, we'll see how the NBA season goes uh, as we get along to this, the latter part of the season, see if these veteran teams can pick it up a little bit. But I think, I think this could be the year uh, that the young teams – get in there and make some noise and possibly win a championship. As everyone knows in the NBA, you know, there's only been about six teams that have won titles in the last 40 years or something like that. You know, if you're not the Bulls or the Celtics or, or a team like that. So uh, I, I think it's going to be the, a young man's game this year, and uh, it'll be nice to see some new faces in there. And now it's time for our Tell Me He Didn't Just Say That quote of the week. Tell me he didn't just say that. And this week it comes from the NBA and Magic star player Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard on his team's uh, lackluster play the other night against the New Orleans Hornets. Uh, this is what Dwight had to say at halftime. Quote, I look at guys and they don't look like they want to play. I told them at halftime, if you don't want to play, just stay in the locker room because it doesn't make sense for a team who we should beat to just demolish us. Really, Dwight? Tell me you didn't just say that. Maybe the reason the team's struggling so much, maybe the reason the team looks like they don't want to play, is because it's because you told them you don't want to play with them. You're looking to get your body out of Orlando. You don't want to play with your teammates that you have right now. You want to go to Chicago or New Jersey or wherever, Dallas, Los Angeles. 
anywhere but Orlando. You've made it clear that these guys are not good enough to be your teammates. Maybe that's trying to, starting to drag on them a little bit. Maybe they're getting a little tired of the act of having to answer questions about you because of the pressure you put on them every single game. Come on, Dwight. Tell me you didn't just say that. Let's talk a little baseball now. That's right. You heard me right. Baseball. Spring training only a few weeks away. And, uh, you know, it's been a lot of new guys, a lot of guys moving to new places this year. Uh, you know, of course, last week we had the big signing of Prince Fielder going to the Detroit Tigers. Tigers kind of came out of nowhere uh, and signed him. The American League is going to be really tough this year. Uh, you've got Detroit. We had Prince Field, as I mentioned, and of course you got the Angels who picked up Albert Pujols and C.J. Wilson. The Rangers have their whole team pretty much intact, basically replace C.J. Wilson with Hugh Darvish. Uh, the Yankees and Red Sox seemingly are always in it, and Tampa Bay with their young pitching and young uh, outfield is going to be a factor as usual, uh, as, as of the way they have as of late. So the American League is going to be pretty strong this year, as a lot of the National League uh, power guys have gone over there. And the National League also is going to be very interesting, especially in National League East, as you have the Marlins uh, making a lot of noise, picking up guys like Heath Bell, Jose Reyes, Mark Burley. Uh, the Atlanta Braves and their young uh, rotation should be pretty strong. Uh, also, the Phillies always in there as well, and the Nationals and up-and-coming team should be a tough year for the Mets in that tough this division. Uh, and the National League Central uh, is really anybody's game this year. The Cardinals have gotten significantly weaker. The Milwaukee Brewers losing Prince Fielder, as we've already talked about. Uh, and, and then you've got some of the, the teams that have uh, have some young players, like the Pirates. The Astros should struggle as well this year. The Cubs, who knows what's going on with them. They seem to be a, a, a hopeful team every year. Uh, the National League West, you've got the Young Diamondbacks. The Rockies looking to have a bounce back here. So uh, the National League should be, uh, I don't know if the teams are going to be quite as good as the American League, but should be just as competitive. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Thanks for joining me once again. I am John Brockway. Remember to follow me on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, make a comment, or if you find this on one of my websites, either spadoronsports.com or thefalloutzone.com, or if you find this on Facebook, make sure to make a comment or like the video. Until next time, I am John Brockway.